the fall of man is something that many of us have grown up with and heard and this idea this notion the fall of man is represented in the story of adam and eve and in that story of adam and eve not to go over it because i'm going to touch on something new here i hope for many of course it is that they bite from a tree symbolically and in biting from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil god informs them you will surely die and in biting from this tree, they begin to see the world with their own judgments and opinions. Adam and Eve, of course, clearly is not literal. We know this. Snakes don't talk. God would not be so cruel and heinous as to say, don't, don't, <laughs> I'll put this big red button, don't push it. It's symbolic. And of course, Eve is from Adam. Eve is the rib of Adam. Now if we look at what we now know from observation of reality, we have atom and electron. And when you separate an electron from an atom, you start the multiplication of energy or the beginning of life. I would then say that Adam and Eve is electron and atom. This is how I perceive it. And the introduction of the bite of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil is the implementation inside the life force of a human being of the intellect and the separate mental identity we form within there. We grow up as children and if we were to grow our children side by side with a tree we would not be able to distinguish the force which is growing the two. That force which is growing the child in the tree is one in the same. It has an innate intelligence that's beyond our human understanding. As we grow, however, we start to develop a sense of separation. We wrongly believe that which we observe in the world has an observer. And so as we cross that bridge of what we observe has an observer, we create separation. When we create separation from the human being to nature, which there is none, only created in the mind of man does that exist. When we create that separation, we begin to analyze the environment around us and place our judgments and opinions on it. The problem there is that what some human beings will deem to be evil, others will not. What some deem to be good, others will not. And so we are left with this peculiar situation where the guidance of our own voice is extremely fallible. And we wind up in deep conflict as a human species trying to balance that out. But what if beyond and behind that, behind this voice of self that we have, what if we were always going to be completely aware of that which was wrong and that which was right? But we would know it because our collective being would be guided by the voice of God. Our collective being would be guided by the internal intuitive voice that is the origin of all, the, the, the will of unconditioned love. Jesus seems we are on the topic of Adam and Eve. He was very clear that the God he serves, which is clearly a God without conditions on its love, was not of this world. And so, when we look at our conscience, when we look at our opinions, when we look at our judgments, we can begin to relate and say the reason the world is in a pickle is that there is the voice of Satan within our lives. And again, biblically, it's told to us, but we overlook it, we overstep it. The carnal mind is enmity to the laws of God, meaning the thinking mind has no place in God's law and rule. And if we see this separation, we can start to do something about that separation and find out if it's possible here today to regain and access the voice of God in our lives. To be able to see with the lack of tension of judgment, to be able to see the world through the loving eyes of God, and not only from that space without our thoughts and opinions about what our loving eyes are witnessing, 
but in that space of consciousness for somehow the entire human not governed by thought as a tiny fragment of us but the entire human's energy becomes so subtly sensitive to the nature that it is that the voice of God speaks there and and guides that human to the righteous path based upon hearing the voice of God it would seem to me we can access that it would seem to me that the idea of the fall of man is not something that can't be reversed and I say that with experience of observing my own life and giving over the chatter of the mind, the memories, seeing the world through memory, hearing through memory, seeing it through language, hearing it through language, and allowing the body and the brain and the heart to become a vessel of the energy of nature and the subtle push of the unconditioned love of God that is found there. Unconditional love is what everybody is seeking and hoping for. If you look deep at it, we don't want war, we want peace. We don't want to be lied to, you want truth. It all falls under respect and love and empathy. Who is it that places the conditions on the love? Let's separate love and leave it as an energy, a force that does exist beyond humans. We know it, we see animals loving, we see our pets loving us. It's a force that is not, it does not require the construct of a human. So who is it in the human journey that conditions the love? The conditions are that which the mind, the character places on it. I love this child in particular unconditionally because I've grown up caring for them, I've raised them and so I have a daily bond with them. But what about the child? What if that same child, your child, was born down the street? Would you love them with the same unconditioned love? And if not, and if you can honestly say you wouldn't, because we don't love our neighbour's children with the same unconditioned love as a society, you can investigate within yourself. Then how do I access that? Is it possible? And the reality is that when you get beneath the voice, of your opinion, of your mind, you will see that the one who places conditions on the love is the brain which we will say is occupied by the mind. The brain occupied by mind says, I love based on the memory that I have of relating to this person. I love based on the anticipation I have that I'll get some benefit from this person. Uh, I, I love I don't love this person based on the lack of forgiveness I have for what they've done. I don't love this person based on my judgment surrounding their activities and belief systems. It is the analyzer inside you that places conditions on God's love. When you observe reality around you, observe not analyze, to observe, you understand reality innately. The understanding rises through the intelligence inside you. Intelligence is not your thoughts, it's not your mind, intelligence is beyond there as well. And so as you observe, what happens is you, you fall away into this, this tension releases, your body relaxes, and all that's remaining as you observe is this loving awareness. And that love has no condition, it's reverberating from within. And so the fall of man into the dual consciousness the question is, is that reversible to dare? And the answer is yes. We don't have to toil and sweat with this any longer if we don't want to. But we have to acknowledge the limits we are placing upon the voice of God, which is what we were originally supposed to be guided by. The limits placed upon the love of God, which we, were, we are all able to express, is all coming off the back of the brain that's occupied by mind, the brain that is free of mind, then that love can express and, and create and, and build in the name of love, not in the name of love based upon memories and experiences of the character within. Atom and Electron, Adam and Eve. 
For me, this approach brings a great deal more clarity and practicality to my ability to bring God's love into this world today. I hope it does you. Have a beautiful and blessed day. God bless, guys. Bye. Over the years, many of you know I have used this channel to be the sole source of promotion for the work that we do to bring God's love into this world out in Tanzania. Up to now, using the publicity from this channel and the love and kindness of those human beings who are among those watching, we have managed to build a special needs community a village dedicated to the care and support of special needs children in crisis. Some of these children come from the most horrendous backgrounds and thanks to that village and that community that we call Feathers Till, a great deal of love and healing has been provided in their lives. Our family in Tanzania is now made up of nearly 200 children who were in need of a loving family home. And I'm just making this to say thank you to everybody who supports what we do. Thank you to everybody who shares what they can, be it time, resources, uh, fundraising and creativity found there. Thank you. You have made the foundations of our family possible. And it is through you guys and your love and support that we are able to bring this spark of God's unconditioned love into the world. If you want more information on our projects, please visit www.sharetanzania.com. God bless guys, enjoy the rest of the video.